You are now viewing Prophet H. Walker and True Life Pentecost Church. Those that are viewing and seeking after righteousness, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. <laughs>
just received words from Prophet H. Walker. I thought I wanted to be, but what a wonderful time we had this week in the household of faith. And I say to the remnant church, the remnant means what's left, holiness. Those who have made a commitment to follow God according to the word and not willing to follow the hypocrite preachers who want to compromise and twist the scriptures and cause you to think that you are saved when in reality you are not. Someone shared uh, the other night uh, with one of the members passing out tracts and said, well, all you have to, I'll be there at the library up in Spartanburg. And uh, the young man said, well, you know, all you have to do is you just got to believe on the Lord and tell somebody that you're automatically saved. But brothers and sisters, that's a lie from the pits of hell. That's a lie we've dealt with and telling people for a long, long time. And I'm here to correct that lie. On the day of Pentecost, when the first sermon was preached on the anointing of the Holy Ghost, a man preached said, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for remission of sin. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Promises to you and to them that are far off, even as many as the Lord thy God shall call. About 3,000 souls at the church that day, and they remained steadfast in the apostles' doctrine, the apostles baptizing water in the name of Jesus, the apostles leading a holy lifestyle, hallelujah, and they taught it, and they lived it, hallelujah. We today have got to understand, we got to go back to the old time religion, we got to go back to true holiness, and bypass all these hypocrite devils, that listen close, don't never be a proud follower, Always be independent within yourself that you can establish a true relationship with God. The crowd is not going to make it. Jesus says, straight is the gate and narrow the way that lead to life and few. There be that can find it. Only a few are going to be a part of the remnant church. But the, those whom God has called and placed that deep down in their soul, you will find a way to a holiness church. And when the message goes forward, you'll do something about it. Amen. It's one thing to hear the word, and it's another thing to stand on that word you've heard. Sometimes God will cause you to receive a great blessing. And the greatest blessing of all is eternal life in heavenly places forever, where your sins are remitted for the record. What a blessing, hallelujah. What a blessing, hallelujah. What a blessing you get down on your knees and pray to God, and God hears your prayer. Hallelujah. Oh, son of God. What a blessing to live a holy life before God. Even though sometimes friends will reject you, loved ones will turn against you, and sometimes you got to cry yourself to sleep. But one thing is for certain, if God made a promise, he'll never leave you, nor forsake you. Hallelujah. I'd rather not have a friend can have Jesus, he's enough for me. I want to get me a text from 1 Samuel uh, chapter 23. And again, a brief thought I want to leave with you. I said when God calls you to a holy calling, then there is a commitment each individual is, is, is must make or has to make to prove or identify the relationship with God who's called you. Yes. Here we see a story of someone who knew the hand of God was on a servant. Amen. And he knew that if he found that servant, everything would be all right. You know, sometimes it pays to follow somebody who's following after Jesus. I mean, Paul said, follow me as I follow God. Hallelujah. So again, we see in the text, I want to pick up in verse 16, that's my time. And Jonathan saw son arose and went to David into the wood and strengthened his hand in God. Yes. And he said unto him, Fear not, for the hand of Saul my father shall not find thee. Yeah. Now Jonathan was next in line to King Saul's throne. Yes. But you know the story, God had rejected King Saul and had chosen David to be king in his place. Yeah. Now, when David was chosen and anointed to be king, how come God didn't put him up on the pedestal then? Amen. You know, sometimes God waits, and he waits. Even though you've got a calling in your life, God waits because there's always things he's trying to prove, not only to David, but to the fugitive's church and those who are called to be leaders in the church. Now, God calls David, even though he was chosen and anointed, to go hide in the woods from a devil. Now, here's an 
I'm trying to show you. David had to wait to the right time to move up. But David had somebody who was on his side, but the somebody who was on his side didn't want to follow David all the way. He wanted to follow David part of the way, but brothers and sisters, when God said you're a prophet, you need to follow him all the way. And not follow him part of the way. Part of the way is not going to get it, but straighten that gate and narrow that way. And you need somebody to guide you down that pathway that leads you eternal life in heavenly places forever. And he said to him, fear not. Watch. I shall be next unto thee. You be king in Israel, and I'm going to be right by your side. Right. Yeah. Hallelujah. But wait a minute, dear. Read it. And they two made a covenant before the Lord. And they made an agreement before God. Yeah. Hallelujah. And David abode in the wood. David still st stayed hiding out in the woods. You know, out in the woods, there wasn't no comfort zone. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. You took a bath when you could, ate when you could. Yeah. Amen. You covered up with whatever. A uh, coat that you might have had. I don't think they had blankets back then. They had heavy coats. So I'm trying to show you there was not necessarily a comfort zone for David, even though he was called and anointed to be king. Sometimes you got to wait till God calls you, and when God calls you, you got to do something about it. But the point I'm trying to drive across here, if God called you to holiness and tell you to follow this pathway and follow this servant, nothing for you to do but go ahead and pick up your cross and follow after him. Now Jonathan went back to the to the castle. Yeah. Jonathan went back to the comfort zone. He went back to his father's house. Yeah. But God had separated him from his father's house and quoted his favor with David. But he didn't want to go with David. That was the enemy came and destruction yeah. came for King Saul. Guess who was with King Saul? Jonathan, his son. When Jonathan wasn't supposed to be there, somebody better take this message to heart. God called you in the Holy Don't go back into that false church. Don't go back into the world. Hallelujah. You know what's out there. You know the lies that they're telling you. They're telling you two men can marry each other. Two lesbians can marry each other. They're telling you all these lies. You can sweetheart, you can fornicate, and you can do whatever you want as long as you repeat it. Uh, Romans 10th chapter, verse 10. But brothers and sisters, there's more to Romans 10th chapter, verse 10. Because the same prophet who wrote Romans 10th chapter wrote the 6th chapter of Romans. And he said, shall we continue in sin? Will grace have the bound back for me? How shall we in the dead to sin? Go back and live in sin. Hallelujah. Straight is the gate and narrow the way to lead to life. Jonathan didn't want to follow that straight and narrow. He wanted eternal life. He wanted to be with David when David got exalted. Well, what he wanted to do is go back to the comfort zone and then wait till David got to be exalted. Then he was going to step over here. But you can't always do it that way. Sometimes you got to suffer a little bit. Sometimes you got to pick up your cross and follow after Jesus. The rich man came to Jesus. He said, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And God said, have you, how did your father and your mother? Have you kept the commandments? He said, I've done all of this. But there's one thing that you lack. Yeah. Go back and sell all you have and then come back and pick up your cross and follow after me. And the Bible says the young man dropped his head and walked away sorrowful because he had too much to lose. Yes. Too much to lose. He didn't want to give up finances. He didn't want to give up a nice home. He didn't want to give up his friends. Amen. That he could party with every now and then. You know when you're in holiness, you can't party with everybody. Hallelujah. Sometimes you just got to pick up your cross and follow after Jesus and get your joy, peace, and happiness in church. That's why when we come to church, you come to church, you don't come burning down. You come to church with a happy feeling, a happy confidence, because you want to lift up Jesus. And the more you lift up Jesus, the more you turn on the Holy Ghost, the more happy you get. You don't think about the bill collector. You don't think about what happened last week on the job. How you don't have no burden because God is your burden barrier. All you got to do is lift up Jesus and learn how to call him by his name and lift him up and exalt him. Hallelujah. We learn how to praise God. Joy has come unspeakable. It don't come from money, hallelujah. It don't come from friendship. Joy comes from a relationship that you develop with God. Hallelujah. We make up our mind. We want to follow him. Then the word comes. And the word comes with clarity and understanding. And we have to be willing to put the word into action in our lives. And once we're able to do this, then we can walk down that pathway. And can't nothing harm us. 
Hallelujah. The devil can turn it off harder than what it ought to be. The devil can put every stomach back before you that he can. But how do you I've got happiness and joy in my heart? Because I believe in the covenant relationship that God had with me. I've got a relationship with God. He's all about me. He's my joy. He's my strength. He's my peace of mind. He's everything I need. But when there is a decision to make, sometimes God asks you to do something that you think, well, it don't take all that. I don't have to do that. Jonathan was thinking, I don't have to go and hide in the woods. I can wait till the proper time, and then I can step in. Brothers and sisters, never let it be said too late. And Jesus said, the day you hear my voice, harden not your heart. Amen. Somebody here has been called back into holiness. Don't walk away from eternal life. Don't go back to that pleasure in that comfort zone where they drink the liquor and smoke the cigarettes and yeah. whatever things are. I had to smoke every now and then. A man told me, he said, yeah, I, I, uh, I drink, but I, I, get, I, 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 I get drunk at home. Any time you take, uh, take a beverage that alters your mental faculty, yeah. you high. That's right. Now the Bible don't call it high. The Bible calls it drunk. That's right. And the Bible says a drunkard shall not yeah. inherit the kingdom of heaven. Now why they don't preach that? Why don't T.D. Jakes and uh, Kenneth Copeland and Joyce Miles, why don't they preach that? Because Joyce Miles, Kenneth Copeland, are preaching and T.D. Jakes Amen. for the crowd. They have a social club and not a church. They are CEOs over a corporation and they're not pastors over a church. The Bible said, no one that they were among them, for they watch for your soul. I'm a prophet in the Lord's house. And God's final messenger. Hallelujah. And I drive a 1996 car, and the cars I take is for the furthering of the kingdom, and not for me. And my people know it. That's why they follow me. And they won't follow a stranger. Hallelujah, they won't hear the voice of a stranger. Jesus said, my sheep, hear my voice. And the devil, they will not follow me. I'm so happy in the I'm glad. Love Talk Radio.